So now we've got a chapter on aromatic compounds, and uh, the most common representative is by far benzene. Uh, and in this case, we're going to start by just simply learning how to name different benzenes. And we'll start off easy here. We're going to start with monosubstituted benzenes. Uh, it's just benzenes with one substituent. And you name benzene as the parent chain, and you just name the substituent that's attached. Now, with only one substituent, it has to be located at carbon number one of the benzene ring. And then you just kind of number around. And we'll do some more complicated uh, polysubstituted benzenes in a minute. But for our monosubstituted, since the only substituent you have uh, has to be at carbon one, it is definitely not included as part of the name. And so in this case, this is just simply name the substituent, bromo, and then the parent chain, benzene. So bromo benzene. And this one here, we've got an ethyl group instead, and so this is simply ethyl benzene. Cool, so simple monosubstituted benzenes, nothing more to it than this. Let's make it harder, though. So now we'll take a look at some polysubstituted benzene rings. And uh, first couple got two substituents, so there's disubstituted. And the last one there we'll take a look at is a trisubstituted. Uh, this will be a little bit similar to what you saw with cyclohexanes back in first semester here. But uh, in this case, the first one here for the two substituents, uh, if you give them numerical locations, we'll just name them both as substituents and say benzene is the parent chain. Uh, we've got an ethyl and a bromine, and you can go one and three or one and three either way. So when there's a numerical tie, you might recall alphabet breaks the tie, so bromine gets to be number one, and then we'll number through, in this case, counterclockwise, uh, to get that ethyl group the lowest possible number. Uh, so in this case, the bromine's at one, the ethyl's at three. We'll name them in alphabetical order, just like uh, in naming alkanes here. So we'll say one bromo, three ethyl, and then simply benzene. So a little bit different than monosubstitute. So in this case, we do have to give the chain locators there uh, for each of the substituents. But after that, it's really just more of the same. But uh, again, figure out who gets to be number one, kind of the big deal here. So same thing in the next one. We've still got bromo and ethyl. Uh, and it's one and two, or it could have been one and two the other way around. But again, bromine breaks the tie when there's a numerical tie. So in this case, we'll say one bromo, two ethyl. benzene. Cool, so nothing more to it than that. With a tri-substituted benzene, you've got to be a little bit careful because it's it's not going straight to the alphabet. You've got to have a numerical tie, and we don't in this case. If we make the ethyl number one, the chlorine would be at number two, and the bromine would be at number four, and that's the best we're going to do numerically. Had we made the bromine number one, we could have had the chlorine number three and the ethyl number four, and that's not quite as good. I'd rather have that second substituent on position two rather than position three. And same thing around, had we made the chlorine number one, the ethyl group would have been at two and the bromine would have been at five. And again, that would not have been as good as what we've got uh, written here in red, one, two, and four. Uh, and so in this case, we'll still name them in alphabetical order. So we'll start with the bromo in this case. So four bromo, so then chloro's next. And so that's two chloro, and then finally one ethyl, and then benzene. Cool, so with multiple substituents, just make sure you get your numbers assigned correctly, but then just name them in alphabetical order, just like you would with an alkane. So now we're gonna take a look at a number of benzene rings that have special names with certain substituents. So you notice here we first got a carboxylic acid attached to benzene. Uh, we call that benzoic acid for short. If we named it the long way, it would be benzene carboxylic acid. Same thing with benzaldehyde when you've got the aldehyde group attached. Again, the long way would be benzene carbaldehyde. So in this case, benzaldehyde is kind of the short way. Uh, here we've got uh, hydroxybenzene, special name is phenol. Here we've got methoxybenzene, special name is anisole. So here we've got aminobenzene, special name is aniline. And here we've got a vinyl group attached to our benzene, and that's styrene. Uh, and then finally here we've got methylbenzene, and his special name is toluene. Uh, and then it turns out when you've got more than one methyl group, when you've got two of them, I should say, anyways, uh, we call that xylene. And then this is specifically O-xylene. We'll figure out what that means in a minute, but it turns out there's three different ways those two methyl groups could be arranged. But you should know that uh, dimethylbenzene is called xylene. So these are the special names. These are the ones you're kind of really on the hook for uh, in nomenclature, and we'll see how to apply them in just a sec. So now let's take a look at some disubstituted benzenes here when you've got any of these benzenes that have special names. So if we look at this first one here, we've got a chlorine and a hydroxyl group. So, and if you recall, that hydroxyl group has a special name, and that's phenol. Now, in naming it as phenol, that automatically implies that wherever that special group is, that is going to be position number one. It's not about lowest possible numbers for all the multiple substituents. If you call it phenol, the OH is on carbon one of the benzene. And so in this case, that would put the chlorine at carbon two. And so in this case, we could just 
name the chloro as a substituent, whereas then phenol becomes the parent chain. So in this case, we'd say 2-chloro, and then just simply phenol as the parent chain. It's as simple as that. Now, there's another way to go about doing this, and it turns out uh, this route kind of uses a convention we call ortho, meta, and para, three words here for disubstituted benzenes. So when you got one of these special names, it's always implied that whatever is, you know, the parent chain, that's where the uh, number one chain locator is going to be. So in this case, phenol, calling something phenol implies that the OH is on position one. But if you look at the position twos, those are called ortho positions. So if you call, look at position threes, those are called the meta positions. And if you look at position four, that is called the para position. So when you've got one of these benzenes with a special name and one other substituent, you can, instead of giving the numerical de designation, like 2-chlorophenol here, you could also say ortho-chlorophenol as well, or just simply O for short. So O-chlorophenol, and that would be O, M, and P for ortho, meta, para, depending on which relationship you've got. So for this next one here, again, being phenol as a parent chain, that's position number one, and we find the chlorine is at position number three. So again, we could call this the three chlorophenol, or that's a meta relationship now, so we could also call this M chlorophenol or meta chlorophenol, same def. Uh, last but not least here again, this is another phenol, so Numbering this one around doesn't really matter if we go clockwise or counterclockwise. We'll get to the chlorine at position 4 either way. So we could call this 4-chlorophenol. One word there. Shouldn't look like there's a space there. Uh, or we could also call this para or p-chlorophenol. Cool. So disubstituted benzenes, when you have any with these, with these special names, so you've got two different ways to worry about it now, either numerically showing where that substituent's located or orthometapara instead. So now we've got a question presenting itself, and maybe this even already occurred to you. Uh, but we've got two special substituents here. So methoxybenzene is called anisole, and hydroxybenzene is called phenol. And so as a result, it turns out there's just different ways you could possibly name this. Now, if we want to call this anisole, that automatically makes that position number one, which would put the hydroxy group at position two. And so calling it anisole, that's the parent chain, then the hydroxy group's just a substituent, and we could call it 2 hydroxy anisol, and same diff like we showed in the last slide, with only two substitutions, we could have also called it O hydroxy anisol. So I'll just put the O at the beginning there and kind of get lazy. Uh, the other thing we could do here is call it a phenol instead, then that would be position one, and the methoxy group would be at position two. And so in this case, we'd call it two methoxy phenol, or yet again, you could call it O methoxy phenol as well. So when you've got two substituents that get special names, take your pick. Uh, you've got multiple correct ways of naming this. So now I want to look at polysubstituted, so more than just two, but in this case I'm going to use an example with three substituents coming off a special name. Now, uh, the only one of these that gets a special name is the methoxy benzene, and that's anisole. So I'm going to name this as anisole here, so that makes that position one, and I can get around to the nearest substituent with making that position two, so we're going to go around clockwise here. Three, four, and then the bromine, therefore, is at position five. Uh, in this case, we'll name them in alphabetical order like normal. Uh, one thing to note here, with more than one substituent on your parent chain, you can't use ortho, meta, and para. Turns out it's just improper, so we're going to have to use the numerical designations only in this example. So it turns out ortho, meta, and para only apply when you're naming uh, the location of a single substituent uh, on a benzene or on a special benzene. Uh, so in this case, naming this anisole, uh, we'll name the substituents in alphabetical order first. So bromo comes first, so that's five bromo, and then the chloro, so that's two chloro, and then anisole. And so one more time to reiterate, since we had two substituents, not just one, that's when it's improper to use the terms ortho, meta, and para. You'd never want to call this like meta, bromo, ortho, chloro, anisole. That would be a huge mistake here. So again, with multiple substituents, you've got to use the numerical designations.